Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah, and it's time for Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. I was enjoying watching all your comments while um, you were waiting for the video to start, and that is super cool that you can do that. I love that. And one of the things I noticed that you were talking about is you were talking about setting your reminder. And now that we do our live videos over on YouTube, it's been a lot of fun because I've met a lot of really new people that are in our crochet community that I've never met before, and that's super cool. But if you want to remember or be reminded, you can set that reminder right there on YouTube. Hit that bell and uh, set that reminder. And when we get ready to start our live video, you'll get a reminder to head over and get over there. <laughs> so I'm super glad to see you all here. And it's really fun to come hang out a little bit before the video starts and talk to each other. And I think that's cool. That's how we are a crochet community. Because, I mean, what's better to talk about than crochet yarn and maybe what we're drinking, like our coffee or tea or something? <laughs> All righty, are you ready to get started? Because I've got a whole table full of things to show you. All right, the first thing we need to do, of course, is our traditional clink in. And again, if you don't know what that means, it just means clink in, I'm here. I'm here to talk and chat and have a good time and a yarny good time at that. <laughs> well, before we get started, I do want to share something with you. Occasionally, I do get postcards and cards in the mail, and it's a lot of fun. I don't uh, have a P.O. box. A lot of people ask me for a P.O. box. If you want to send me something, a card or a thank you or whatever... That's totally fine. Just message me. You can message you can message me here. You can message me on Facebook or the uh, web page, which is www.poshpoochdesigns.com. And you can find that link underneath the video as well. And I'll send you my shipping address, okay? I just don't put it out there because there's just too much spam and stuff out there. And that's why I always say never, ever put your email address or your shipping address anywhere online where anybody can find it unless it's in an email or a message, okay? So if you want to do that, let me know. But I want to show you one that I got this week that was super special. This is from my friend Kim. And she, look at this envelope. She decorated the envelope. Isn't that cute? She spelled my name right because I'm Sarah, no H. Love that. And she sent me this beautiful card. And she sent stickers for my granddaughter. Okay, so my granddaughter Zoe just turned nine. She's my little gymnastics girl. Um... She was so excited. She just got to go see Simone Biles and some of the other girls, Lori Hernandez, at the Gold Across America or something like that down in downtown Denver. She had a blast. Anyway, so uh, Kim sent a whole bunch of stickers. And, you know, I have another granddaughter that lives in Oklahoma. That's Callie of my, da my daughter's my daughter's daughter. <laughs> Zoe is my son's daughter. And she decided she wanted to pick out half of them to send to Callie. So I'm sending Callie a, and my, my grandson Aiden a Halloween box. And so she picked out some stickers and I stuck those in the box. And I made sure she understands they're from Kim and Zoe picked them out. Isn't that cute? It says stickers for your granddaughter. <laughs> Everybody loves stickers, don't we? I do. I still love them. I don't care how old I get or how much of a granny I am. I love stickers. The other thing that she sent that is super cute is this. I love hook rugs. Hook rugs are one of the things I did first when I was first learning to play with yarn when I was like nine or ten. And so my granddaughter and I are going to work on this together. We opened it up because um, she said, Sarah, open that, please. So I did. <laughs> Anyway, Kim, thank you so much. My granddaughter and I are going to really enjoy working on this. Thank you for the stickers. Both my granddaughters are going to love them. All right, so I just wanted to show that to you. And this is a complete kit. It has everything you need to make this right here. And I'm really excited. It's a yarn pillow craft kit. She said she got it at Hobby Lobby. So if you're looking for some of these, I've seen these at Hobby Lobby. Michael's used to have them, but I haven't seen them there lately. And I think Joanne's has them also. They're a lot of fun. And it's a great way to learn how to... Because it can, at first, when you're hooking the little pieces of yarn and it can be a little 
tricky. And so it's a great way to learn how to, you know, use that because the hook's a little different, of course. But it is, it's a super, super duper, whole lot of fun. All right. Are you ready to find out who won the October giveaway? Well, let me again show you what we've got. The winner can choose either the project bag, coffee and crochet with Sarah, or they can have the zipper pouch. One side says coffee and crochet, and the other side has the crochet heart with the hook, and it has a keychain and a little tassel or tassel. My grandmother always called them tassels. She was very proper. Okay, so you're going to get two skeins of this. I always call it bedazzled, but it's actually dazzling. <laughs> it has all those sparkles in it, and those are fall colors. And then you'll also get two skeins of this Fireplace Comfort. Gorgeous colors. Okay, now, how you entered this was two weeks ago, I put this out here, and all you had to do was to comment on that first video. Now, before I give the, the winner's name, I know you're all excited, but I always want to be really clear about this. We pick someone, it goes in the random generator, and the random generator, we don't pick someone. We take all the names, and the random generator picks someone out of there. And then um, I make sure it's not a bot <laughs> or someone who's not real, you know, because unfortunately there's trolls and things out there. Anyway, so I make sure you're a real person, and then you're the winner. Now... I want to repeat this, never ever put your shipping address or email address out there. Don't put it in the comments anywhere. All right, what you need to do is if you are the winner, go to www.poshpoochdesigns.com and that link is in the notes underneath the video in that description box, it's the web page, and you can hit that tab that says contact. Okay, and that contact tab will shoot you shoot an email right over to me. Another way you can contact me is through my Facebook page, Posh Pooch Designs. There's another Posh Pooch out there, but it's a uh, Posh Pooch Washing Dog Place, and I think it's I, th it's, I think it's in Oklahoma. But I can't remember. That's not me. <laughs> I'm Posh Pooch Designs. Uh, we all, we always call it patterns for pooches, patterns for people, and patterns for fun. Because when I first started out, all I did was dog stuff. Anyway, you can contact me those two ways, all right? And if you don't know how to contact me and you're the winner um, and you're watching, you can comment in the comments, I'm the winner, please help me, or something like that. Because we'll get the package to you, all right? Are you ready? It's right here. The winner of the October giveaway is... Ba -bum -bum -bum. Oh, no, that's not a good drum roll. <laughs> All right, it's Wendy, W-E-N-D-Y, Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-D-T. Wendy Schmidt, congratulations. You are the October giveaway. And remember, contact me, okay? The thing that I do is I don't go chase you down because you need to contact me, okay? All right, so that's our winner. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you some fun yarn that I'm going to be using in uh, November for something really fun, and I found it at Hobby Lobby. Let me click over to the other camera. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous yarn? This is a velvet yarn, and it has a sparkle going through it. Isn't it gorgeous? <clears throat> I, I, I have two ideas of what I'm going to make with this. Maybe you can help me decide whether I should make a Christmas stocking, or I want to make two. I want to make a red and white, and I want to make this sort of, this um, antique white and this antique green. So should I make stockings, or should I make hats? You decide for me, okay? Now, if you want to pick some of this up, it is a, it is a medium number four. There's three and a half ounces on each of the skeins. It is called Velvety Smooth Sparkle. This is ivory, olive, red, and white. The white one I got is not sparkle. For some reason, I couldn't find the sparkle, and I went ahead and got the white. I'll go back to Hobby Lobby because I go there every week. I usually go every Tuesday after I shop because I on Tuesday afternoons my my errand day, and I'll keep checking to see if I can find the velvet in the sparkle. But if I can't, that's super pretty. Also, it's velvet yarn, but a thing that I really liked about it is that it's a medium weight number four. A lot of the velvet yarns are chunky fives, and I wanted a medium number four. And these are we meet. 
The, I'm so excited I can't talk. These are medium weight number four yarns. And I wanted it that way because not everybody likes to work with velvet. And what I, the, to, the projects that I want to make with this, I want you to be able to use another yarn if you want to. All right? Yarn B, Velvety Smooth Sparkle. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to tell you about is I've been designing this week on a couple of things. I've got a fun little angel doll we're going to do. And then I, I know we've talked about this in the past um, about our Christmas tree skirt crochet along. I am planning at this point to do the Christmas tree skirt crochet along the first week of November. All right. Um, that's the plan right now. And you know, with anything, things can change, but that's what we're planning on. And that Christmas yarn that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using, um, the, uh, it's called Cranberry and Ivy, I think, or Ivy and Cranberry, which is the Michaels brand, um, yarn. Um, you're going to need about three and a half to four skeins of it. And then you'll also need a white, a cranberry, and a, and a solid green to go with it. But, you don't have to use those colors. You can use any colors that you want to. And we're going to do the, the crochet along in three steps on that first week of November. Monday we'll do part. Wednesday we'll do part. And then on Friday we'll finish it up. But if you don't get it done, remember this. It'll always be on YouTube. The videos will always be there. You can always go back to it. Watch it over and over as many times as you want to. And also, I'll put the pattern underneath that video in that description box so you'll always have it to work with, okay? All righty. Tammy says I need to make a matching hat and scarf. I think so, too. I, I, I keep leaning towards a stocking, but I have another pattern I want to use for a new stocking. And I really love this velvet. I think I think I might do that. I don't know. I can't, I can't make up my mind. So I thought I'd see what you guys think. All right, now. Are you ready to see what happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs? Now, behind me on this side, <laughs> I keep doing the wrong side. On this side is the one hour chunky cowl. And that is done with a bulky number five yarn. You can do it with a bulky number six, but keep in mind it'll get it a little bit bigger. And I have had questions about can I use two strands of medium weight number four? Um, if you use two strands of medium weight number four, that really equals more of a bulky six. So if you want to use two strands of a light three, that would probably work out about the same. But it's a big bulky cowl, and if it's a little bit big, it's probably going to be okay. And so you just got to kind of see what, what you've got. You don't have to use the exact yarn that I used. I used a bulky number five. You can use any bulky number five you have in your yarn stash. Or if you found one at a store or someplace you really like, use it. It works up super quick because you're using uh, triple stitches and double crochet stitches and, and half double crochet for the band. I mean, it works up super quick. And I had someone ask me, <clears throat> actually not someone, several someones, <laughs> if I'm going to make a hat to match. And yes, I am. Tomorrow, I'm going to do the video. Let me grab a little sip of this hot coffee. <clears throat> Talking too much. <laughs> Tomorrow, on Wednesday, we're going to do the one-hour beanie hat that matches it. It's going to have similar stitches, of course. It'll be done a little bit different because it's going to be a little bit smaller. But one thing to remember, when you're doing a hat or even a cowl like this one, not this one, this one, <laughs> <laughs> that <clears throat> the yarn is super duper stretchy and a lot of people will say well you made that hat in a 19 but my head's a 21 well remember they're super stretchy and you don't want to make the hat if your head it measures 24 inches around you don't really want to make the hat 24 inches around you want to make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't stretch out yarn stretches out and then you have a hat that's just way too big okay so keep that in mind when you're working with hats and things like that so tomorrow lord willing and the creek don't rise <laughs> the snow don't fly <laughs> i'm gonna do the one hour bookie hat it's gonna be a beanie hat a really basic hat you're really gonna like it super easy if you made the cowl i keep doing the wrong side i don't know why if you if you do did the cowl then you already understand the basic stitches of how the hat's made. It's just made a little bit different as far as rounds and, you know, how many and all that stuff. But as far as the stitches, they're the same. 
Okay. All right. So we did that. <clears throat> Let me look down here. Oh, the ghosts we did on Friday. Those were so much fun. All right. So here is the big one I made. This is made with a bulky six. Here's the little one I made. <laughs> Whoops. Turn his eyes around. They're green. <laughs> These are so fun to make. If you love to do, you know, crafts with your kiddos or your grandkids, these are super fun to make. And you don't have to use the beads for eyes. You can always make little French knots or, you know, little buttons and just glue them on or something. And it doesn't matter the weight of the yarn. This one is a bulky, has a, has a little bit of a sparkle in it. Look at the eyes. They're all funny. <laughs> I just love it. This is one of those projects that's just super fun. And that's what Friday Fun Day is all about. Here's another one that I did. And you can do them long and short and great big. And on the Friday video we did last Friday, I showed you how to make a template so that you can decide how long you want to make your ghosts. And you can use even those great big bulky eight yarns, make them big and make a great big ghost. And the neat thing about these also is it's really just making a basic tassel or tassel. <laughs> it's just a basic tassel. And you can use this to make a doll. I mean, <clears throat> make the arms, make the legs. I mean, you can you can make a, a, um, a basic rag doll is what I was trying to say with these. And they're super fun. And I think these are fun. It's a great way to get kids involved in crafts that aren't super duper hard. I know a lot of kids, maybe they're not crafty, but they still like to make things. And that's something that can be super fun. And you know what else? You don't have to make them in white. You can make them green. You can make them yellow. And you know what? I do have some glow-in-the-dark yarn around here somewhere that I ordered a few years ago that I used on a different project. If you've got some of that glow-in-the-dark yarn, that would be super fun. Or maybe Maybe some of that yarn that has the metallic in it that is a reflective. You got some left over? Make a purple ghost. Super fun. <laughs> and when parents are walking by with their flashlight, they'll see that reflection on that ghost. It's just, it, it's just a fun way to, to get your kids involved in crafts. Now, this Friday we're going to do something fun too. And one of the things you're going to need is your scrap yarn. We're going to be using medium weight number four yarn. You'll need a needle, your H hook. And you'll need some lollipops. <laughs> you can use the basic Tootsie Pops or Blow Pops. They just need to be about this size. The Dum Dum Suckers are too small for this project. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what we're going to make, but you might need some orange yarn, some white yarn, and some black yarn. <laughs> you don't need any beads. You don't need anything else. And... Um, one of the places I go to to find Tootsie Pops and Blow Pops that are the right size is I just go to the Dollar Tree. For a, for a dollar, you can get like, what, 12 Tootsie Roll Pops? And um, some bags are even bigger at other places. And um, you can also, um, when you're making these, I'm going to show you how to make, a, you know, two or three different ones that I like. Um, okay, I'll tell you what they are. They're basically the covers that go in your Tootsie Roll Pops. <laughs> But the neat thing about those is once they eat the sucker, you've got a puppet. So it's a really neat idea to give away, um, had a hair on there, to give away for Halloween if your kids can eat the candy. If they can't eat the candy, just give them the, the uh, finger puppet and then you've got a fun little thing. So, and it's a great way you can use up your yarn stash. Uh, we're going to be using medium weight number four yarns. Just get in there. Uh, find purple and green and yellow and orange and white and black and gray. And just have some fun. Um, you know, these things that we're going to make, you can use your imagination and do them any colors you want to. And add one other, other details that, other details that you want to. All right. So be looking forward to that for Friday. All right. So let's see. We talked about the one hour cow, the ghost. And then yesterday we did the stitch of the month. And this stitch is so interesting because it has about a hundred different names. It really does. Um, it's been called reversible blocks because it looks the same on both sides. It's been called staggered blocks because they are staggered when you do your rows. It's been called clever blocks. And that's what I learned it as. When, what I'm doing with some of of learning some of these patterns is these are things I learned about 150 years ago. <laughs> I started 
crocheting when I was 13 or 14, and now I'm almost 60, so <laughs> I've got the old school names out there. But, you know, a lot of new crocheters have come in and renamed some of these patterns, and so they have lots of different names. But the bottom line of this is it really doesn't matter what the name of it is. These are super fun to make, and the stitch pattern is great. If you want to just learn it and do a swatch, you can make nice, really warm baby blankets and regular blankets, pillows, hats, scarves, bags with this stitch pattern. And it has a wonderful repeat that makes it really easy to do. And I, I made these in acrylic yarn, but you can do them in cotton, and they're great for washcloths. I am using these as doilies. I'm just going to set them on the table and put my, my ceramic pumpkin on there, fill it with candy. Um, we only we, we hardly ever get trick-or-treaters, but I always like to be prepared. And, you know, I don't mind eating the leftover candy, even though I'm not supposed to have it anymore. <laughs> so, but I always buy the good stuff because we don't get very many trick-or-treaters. So if I get one, I want to make sure they get a whole Snickers bar. You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, this is a really fun pattern to learn, and it has so many different uses. So, anywho, I was looking at some of the comments there. Um, I made it so um, I switched my screens around so that I can see the comments close. When my, The first week we did the test, the comments were on the other end of the screen. And even with my new glasses, I couldn't see them. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to read through here see if there's any questions. Let's see. Let's see. I don't see any questions. Oh, okay. Rita's saying she loves scrap projects, and I want that reminded me. Um, I love scrap projects too. And this year, for our year long crochet along, we did the stitch of the month. And we have a couple more months to go yet. And But I did want to let you know that starting in January, we are going to be starting a new year long crochet along, and it's going to be the sc happy, scrappy, happy crochet along, or happy, scrappy. Happy Scrapper? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what I wrote down. Let me look. Let's see. Scrap Happy Crochet Along. <laughs> My tongue got away from me and I couldn't talk. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I every week I get questions with, what can I use my scrap yarns for? Is there something I can use my scrap yarns for? And I don't want to waste them. I don't want to throw them away. And so the Scrap Happy Crochet Along will start in January, and we'll do one a month, just like we do now with our Stitch a Month. And we'll still be learning new stitches. We'll still be doing a lot of new fun things. But, you know, I always plan three or four months in advance. I, it's kind of funny. I um, was in uh, Michael's the other day. I was seeing if they had any of the anniversary cakes from uh, Your Inspirations. Because Joanne's has them, and everybody's talking about them. And, and I had them before. I have a pattern that's going to be coming up called the Funky Chunky Poncho that I did with the um, anniversary cake. Well, I wanted some of the new colors. So I may just have to order it online. Anywho, <laughs> I was in Michael's looking for them. And um, I ran into this lady who was also looking for them. And um, she was talking about... Um, she doesn't know what to get. Every time she comes into Michael, she fills up her buggy. And she did. She had one of those carts, you know, the buggy carts, push carts. And it was just full of cake yarn. And I said, I absolutely love the cake yarns. And she's like, I can't believe you said that. Most people don't like them. I said, I love them. I absolutely love them. And she likes to, she was telling me she likes to take them and take cake yarns that don't look like they go together. Like maybe a variegated green and purple, red, and blue or something. And then she puts them together, holds two strands together, and makes the most interesting blankets. And you learn colors that'll go together that you didn't think would go together. And that's kind of what I want to do with this uh, Scrap Happy Crochet Along, is to kind of come up with some ways of using yarns we think don't go together. But they do, and basically colors, you know, because it, it's okay to come up with odd colors if you like it, you know. Not everybody's going to like the same things. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> just to give you a heads up on that, I know I talked about a lot of things. You may need to rewatch this to catch up. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I've got for you today, but I did want to tell you one other thing. I forgot about this. Let me click over to that camera one more time real quick. I want to show you what I picked up. 
You all know how much I love cardinals, and last year I could not find any cardinal buttons. Okay, I found these at Hobby Lobby when I got this sparkle yarn, but they were not in the Christmas stuff. These cardinal buttons were over in the, um, the stationary stuff. I also picked up these buttons. Aren't those cute? Let me get the glare off of there. There we go. I think those are cute too. But I love cardinals and I was looking for cardinal buttons because I have a project I want to use some cardinal buttons on having to do with a, um, you're going to need some buttons for another Friday fun day and um, with some Christmas ornaments. And so I wanted those cardinals. But um, I found some other cardinals, but they were like um, foam. Uh, more like a sticky on thing. And I'm like, nah, that's not what I want. These actually have the little loop on the back you can sew them on. And so there's, let me see, there are only six in here. So I may have to go back and get some more. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted you to know, if you're looking for cardinals, go to Hobby Lobby and look in the stationery. And this particular brand, the Paper Studio, I believe you can find those at Joann's as well. I've not found any good buttons at Michael's. I don't know why they don't carry good buttons, but they don't. And again, that's just my opinion. <laughs> All righty. So, Jem says she's never used cake yarn. Cake yarn <clears throat> is like what I have like over here, right there. It's made where it's a, a flat cake. It's not cake yarn. It's called cake yarn because it's round like a cake. Right there. All those yarns that come like that, that's cake yarn. <clears throat> and they sell it in a lot of different stores. So, um, um, the, I've gotten a lot, quite a few different brands. There's Mandela, Yarnspirations, Karen Cakes. They all, they're all, you know. So I'm going to let everybody go. I want you to have a fantastic week. And I will see you next week. And have, I already said have a great week, didn't I? All right. So, again, thank you for being here today. And remember, I cannot do any of this without all of you. I'll see you next week now. Bye-bye.